Today I'm here in Lamp to find out how and why a community comes together and stays together during hard times. Fotherby is home to a very close-knit community. Every Wednesday members from the community visit their local church for the pop-in. So the pop-in is a weekly event that is for the elderly that aren't able to get out and to see people on a regular basis. So it's in a way to tackle loneliness. So they can come in on a Wednesday, uh, have a tea and cake and just catch up with people that they might not see in a very long time. Coming to the pop-in is a nice experience. As you come into the church, you can feel a strong sense of community as you are welcomed warmly inside. There are smiles in everyone's faces as I sit at the tables with their cups of tea and cake, catching up with each other. You can get a cup of tea or coffee and have some cake if you'd like, and it's free of charge, but you are more than welcome to put in a donation. Everyone's happy as they sit together with their cups of tea and cake and catch up with each other. You can join in and have a cup of tea with the locals and get to know them, or you can go down to the back of the church where the church mice are. The church mice are a crafting group that focus on things such as knitting and crocheting. They make the kneelers for the pews, and so you can go over there if you're interested in things like that, and you can all knit together. I had the privilege of sitting down with one of the people who helped run the pop-in. I wanted to know why they volunteered, what the pop-in means to them, and what they think the pop-in means to the community. Why do you come, in, come to the pop-in? The company, um, and I, I meet everybody, I find out what's happening in the village, and also it's a way of raising funds, so it's just part of village life. Okay, so do you come weekly? I do. I didn't used to, but I do now. Um, I come because I help whoever's um, responsible for that week. Um, they provide the food and at the end somebody has to hoover, somebody has to tidy up, somebody has to wash the pots. And so we all muck in together. How do you think the uh, pop-in benefits the community? Because the people who don't see anybody, um, they come to pop-in. Um, the older people, we get the people from the home, we have a, um, a home in the village for the elderly and they bring them in wheelchairs and they meet everybody in the village who they perhaps wouldn't see in the meantime. We also have some um, houses um, for the elderly and the people there, they come in because they want to see what's going on in the rest of the village, meet somebody and talk to them. Especially since Covid. Covid was very, very bad for the village because nobody saw anybody. We used to have a post office that ran out of the pop-in. And so people from all over the village would come and use the post office, which meant that we saw different people. Since the pop-in, we tend to get the same people all the time. People in the village still haven't got used to going out into the village and socialising. It's still a little bit difficult for the older people. Okay, so how do you as a person benefit from it? I hear all the gossip. <laughs> I hear all the gossip, I hear what's going on, I hear who's poorly, who's not poorly, who might need a hand, who doesn't need a hand. And it just benefits me because I know what's going on and it benefits other people because I can do things for them if I know they need it. Right, so is this a fun place to be, would you say? Um, yes, definitely. Because it's because we all know each other, we're all friends and you get to know the people in the village. Um, sometimes things don't quite go how they should. And so yes, it's fun. Um, nothing's taken too seriously. Um, you can come and have problems and talk to somebody. You can come and just want to tell them something like, you know, I dropped the teapot this morning and the carpet's not well. You can say anything here. You really are amongst friends. Okay, so how is the popping funded? The popping funds itself, really. It's part of the church. Uh, and much as this is a church, it's also a multi-use building, it's used for everything. So every week we don't charge, we do not charge for the popping, it's donations. So you can come, you can have a cup of tea, you can have a piece of cake, etc, etc. And if you've only got 50 pence, you put 50 pence in. If you've got more, you put more in. If you've got nothing, it really doesn't make any difference, you can still come and have something to eat. 
and you are given, as the person who supplies the food, because we take it in turns, um, you are given a sum of money and that is your funding for the popping. And that comes every month and the rest of the money goes into the church funds to keep the church running, pays for the heating. We've got very good heating here but it is a little bit expensive so it pays for the heating. And we do have the heating on while we have the popping. So it funds itself. There's always 25 quid that somebody needs for something. It's nice to see a community coming together and supporting each other like this. Clearly this is the place to go if you need some company and a bit of support. But what I want to know is what happened during COVID times. Was the support for one another just as strong as it would be normally? What did the village do when there was no popping? Right, so when COVID hit, oh. um, how was the popping affected? Well, it was, well, we tried for a while to sort of make it COVID friendly. We tried to take, we, took, we used to have table plus on tables, and we, we tried to do that, take them off and make it so there was, got encouraged a sanitising routine and if you went to the toilet you had to sanitise all that and clean it and made, we made people sort of you know keep a bit of distance but then we had to close down completely because then we all got locked down and, and that was it but when Covid opened up again we opened up in a very very limited way we, we'd had waitress service we put menus on each table and the people came to probably weren't allowed to leave their tables and we delivered their food to them and that's when we introduced paper cups and we just had paper plates and all the food in bags and the people were encouraged to put their own rubbish in their in a plastic bag and take it home with them so we didn't have to deal with waste products that other people had touched and we sanitized the tables religiously after each after after each person had left and then you know, things just gradually, gradually relax, but we've never got quite back to normal. We've kept bagging up the sandwiches and the cakes to a large extent in, in the paper bags because we sort of feel it's more hygienic. We used to serve everything from, you know, a dish of people would help themselves and help us when we all, we would cut the cake, but we decided it's more hygienic that way. We got rid of the paper cups because Barbara Chester, one of ours, she really, really likes proper cups and saucers and teapots. The rest of us are quite happy with mugs and things. So we're in a bit of a halfway house. Some people have teapots, some people have have mugs, but we're still keeping the stuff backed up, except for perhaps bigger cakes, like Susan had today, a coffee cake, when she just serves it like that. Yes, COVID was a, was a nuisance, because I think it stopped a lot of village people me, meeting up. And actually, a lot of the popping people used to go for a walk in an afternoon, and they used to meet by accident down by the dock somewhere and sort of have a socially distanced conversation. So they obviously missed popping, a lot of the elderly residents. So what did um, the village do when there was no popping during COVID? Well, they said they, they used to go, you know, they didn't meet at all, and when you did meet, you know, it was it was at a distance. But saying they used to call it the two o'clock club down at the dock, this informal meeting of of people. And what else did we do? Yeah, oh, yes, we used to have a little quiz evening up at up at Pepin Lane. For, and my husband used to do a weekly quiz for us, and we we stood or sat socially distanced down the road, and Tim would call out his quiz questions, which which was nice. And otherwise, you know, church stopped, churches were locked, which I think was really really sad. So it was very limited, and people did a lot of walking, a lot of greeting as they met people. Right. So, what does the pop in mean to you? It means. It's something we can do for the community, some a service we're pleased to offer, and it's just a it's just a really nice thing to do. And we feel we cater for a lot a lot of needs. There's always somewhere to go on a Wednesday between half past two and half past four. No, it's not half past twelve to half past mm -hmm. two. And you could always meet someone, have a chat, and you know there's a cup of tea and a bit of cake waiting for you. It's almost inspirational to see how they made the most of their time during lockdown and they still managed to come together safely in the end. 
It's nice to see that community can still come together during the most hardest of times. Anyone can tell that the community of Fotherby deeply care about each other, and with the events like the pop-in, no one is left on their own or isolated. So why not stop by laugh next time you're free on a Wednesday afternoon?